Good afternoon and welcome to everyone who's attending today for our Academic Resilient Speaker Series. Today's feature is Overcoming Anxiety and Gaining Confidence Over Final Exams. And we're so pleased uh, to have, first of all, Dr. Margaret Mabindio, who's the founder and director of this series, who has done such a wonderful job of organizing this, and our guest speaker today. Uh, Dr. Kristen Lawson, who's an Associate Professor of Academic Advisement and Student Development. Dr. Lawson has been working in higher education for almost 30 years in various roles, teaching, academic advisor, department chair, and dean. However, her passion has been working with students and helping them to achieve their goals. Knowing what you want to be when you grow up as an 18-year-old is not an easy undertaking. Her focus is to make the process easier and more fulfilling. Dr. Lawson states, I want to help students discover their passion so their career will be fulfilling for a lifetime. Dr. Lawson earned her doctorate in adult and career education from Valdosta State University. So without further ado, Dr. Lawson, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much. I appreciate being here. And thank you to all of you that came. I'm so impressed with the week before finals that we have roughly 25 people here. So thank you so much for coming today. I really do appreciate it. Okay, so let me start a little bit with um, anxiety. Um, many of us tend to think of anxiety as a bad thing. And it's actually not a bad thing. Anxiety is a natural part of life. Um, we get anxious many times when we're getting ready to do something. And that helps a lot of times with our motivation and to get us started on a project so that we don't become overwhelmed. Overwhelmed and anxiety are a little bit different. Okay, normal anxiety kind of gets us going. When anxiety goes too far, it starts uh, manifesting itself in physical and mental ways where you can't control your feelings. You can't control what's happening to you. That's when we need to take a, take a beat, take a stop, figure out what's happening so that we can get to the cause of the anxiety or the issues, put them aside so we can go back to focusing and concentrating on what we need to do at hand, which for right now is actually trying to study for final exams, okay? So again, I want, I want you to understand anxiety is not a bad thing unless it becomes overwhelming, okay, or out of control. Here's where we have the picture of somebody who's become out of control, okay? Mental signs, their thoughts are racing. Um, they can't concentrate. Um, they're really getting to a point where we're almost in panic mode where they can't think. Then the physical symptoms start, the headache, the nausea, uh, the, the um, rapid heart rate, the sweating. And when we know that those symptoms are manifesting themselves, then we get more nervous because we feel like people can see us, you know, having our moment. And this can be debilitating for many students, okay? I don't take this lightly at all. Test anxiety is a very real thing. However, it's something that we can manage, all right? So that's the important key here is it is manageable. So let's talk about a few things that maybe we can do to figure out why this is happening, okay? And, you know, causes of anxiety come from all different areas. It does not have to be academic. And many times when we have test anxiety, it's not a an academic issue, it's something else going on in our lives that's distracting us or stressing us out, okay? Some of us just tend to be worriers by nature. You know, we, just, we just tend to worry about everything all the time. Um, and that's a personality trait, um, but we don't want it to, to take over our personality, okay? So kind of think about that. We do have the opportunity to control some of this, okay? Being poorly prepared is going to cause anxiety. Why? Because you know you didn't do what you were supposed to do. OK, many of us have been in that situation where, you know, I didn't do what I should have. I didn't prepare like I, I wish I could have. So that causes stress, obviously, because you didn't do what you wanted to do. OK, so we want to try to get away from that. You've had a bad experience on exams before. I've had many students come to me and say, I just I, I freak out when I take tests, uh, especially formalized tests like SAT, high stakes tests, very, very um, impactful on your life. So we need to think about why did you have a bad experience previously and how do we fix that for the next time, okay? Um, I can kind of equate it to me as um, in my professional career to interviewing. Um, I remember I had a really bad interview once and instead of really letting it get to me and be upset and sad, 
I learned from it. What did I do wrong? Where were my mistakes? How can I improve the next time? And I promise you, it never happened to me again. And so we have to sometimes look at things as learning experiences to grow, okay? Lack of adequate preparation time. Again, some of this we can control and some of it can't. we can't. So this one we can. We can control our time up to finals, obviously. Be careful not to be too much of a perfectionist. Um, as we know, life is what it is and, and perfection truly doesn't exist. So don't put too much pressure on yourself to be perfect because most likely you're not and that's okay. I wouldn't want to be perfect. That's too much of a, a setup to, to fail, right? You're, you're setting yourself up for, for disaster because it's too much pressure, okay? All you can do is do the best that you can do for yourself, okay? Now, this bottom one you may or may not be able to control. How much, I don't know if you can hear me or answer the question, but I'm seeing many students getting sick right now. Um, stress causes sickness, um, and when you go into a test and you're sick, you don't feel 100%, which may have an impact on that stress level and anxiety in your performance, okay? So again, let's control what we can't control. The things that we can't control, we can't worry about, okay? Because they are or are not going to happen and there's nothing we can do to change it, okay? So control what we can. Margaret, do the, are their speakers automatically off for audio? Say that again. Are there speaker? Can they talk to me if they wanted to? Yes, they can use okay. the chat. Okay, good. I wasn't sure. Okay. All right. So let's think about how we can minimize this, this anxiety and stress that we have and make it work for us in a positive way. One of them is, is a very simple thing. Think positive. And you're thinking, gosh, if that was it, I'd be, you know, perfect. Well, that's a big part of it. Uh, let me give you an example. I'll have students that will come into class. Oh, I'm going to fail this test. I'm going to fail this test. I didn't study. I know I'm going to fail the test. You know what? You're right. You set yourself up. You so, you're telling me you're going to fail. That means you're going to fail. However, the flip side of that is I've studied. I know I'm going to do well. I'm prepared. I'm excited. I'm ready. And having those thoughts affects the outcome. We want a positive outcome. We don't want a negative. OK, so we got to replace some of that negativity with positive thoughts. You know, I know I'm going to pass this exam. I've been studying for a week. I've been studying with groups. I've been doing the practice exercises. I am ready. I am positive. OK, it's going to increase your chances for success. The other thing to think about is when you start taking that test and let's say you don't know the answer to the first one. Now the anxiety starts to creep. OK, don't worry about it. Go to number two. Maybe it's number five. That's the first answer you get. You go, whew. and as soon as you get one of those answers down, everything starts to calm down, okay? So take a deep breath, pick up back where you were, okay? It's okay if you need to skip to number four until you feel something um, correct. You know that the answer is right, and then you get that momentum building, okay? Anybody have any questions? Okay. If you do, please holler. Relax. Relax. This is something that is not easy to do. One, the best ways that we can relax ourselves is through our breathing. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever met any firefighters before, but ask them about their breathing. Because they have to go into buildings where there's smoke inhalation and all those risk factors, they actually have to practice their breathing, breathing in on the eights and breathing out on the eights. What do I mean by the eights? It means counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on the inhale. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, seven, eight on the out, okay? Or you exhale. What that does is it, it brings down your heart rate. And when your heart rate is normal, your body is functioning at a good place. When your heart rate is out of whack, everything else is out of whack, okay? One thing that you can also do is sometimes you don't feel it, but you're carrying your stress like in your shoulders. I'm a stress carrier here. And it gets all balled up and I get nervous. So what I do, because... I can't feel it sometimes is I'll stress the muscle intentionally stress and then feel it go feel the muscles release okay obviously sometimes you might not do this in the class for all students but you can mind mindfully breathe and nobody's going to notice anything different about you okay um generally this type of anxiety will will go away 
okay? But you are in control at this point, okay? You have the test in front of you. You've done everything you can do at this point. So maintain positivity, take deep breaths and relax. You're going to do well, okay? One of the other best ways to do well is to be prepared. If you're not stressed out, that probably means you're prepared adequately. Um, and being prepared can, can solve all of these anxiety issues and sort of stress-related issues, okay? Um, one thing that you wanna do when you, I mean, this is more topical, but that's okay. When you study for final exams, you need to figure out what topics that you need to focus on, okay? Is it everything? Is it the whole book? Is it only the last couple chapters? And you want to break that down into chunking pieces, okay? This is sort of a memory thing, but essentially the way that we remember material is kind of in two ways. One, if we chunk things that are similar together and remember them together, it's easier to recall. Keeping that in mind, if we can attach new information to old information, our brain, brain is already wired for that place. So we just put it right there on that bookshelf and now we will be able to remember the material better, okay? Try to feel confident. Give yourself the, you know, that little voice in your head. Hey, I just got that one right. I feel pretty good about myself. Keep, keep that mantra going while you're taking the test. This feels good. I know this stuff. I know this stuff, okay? All right, create a study plan. And no, you can't probably read that visual very well. And it's really probably not that important that you do. But, you know, what's the plan? What are you going to study? When are you going to study? How are you going to study? Where are you going to study? How many hours? And that's a lot of questions you're thinking, oh, my gosh, that's overwhelming. It's not that overwhelming. Um, what I would try to do is what is your most important final? That's where you start. OK, what's the most important final? Maybe it's worth 50 percent of your grade. That's a huge chunk of your grade. All right. So maybe that one you need to put more time into to study than you do maybe another final exam. OK, but notice what this person did was they put the different uh, classes that he or she was taking. Then it talked about what kinds of things I need to create a study guide for X, Y and Z. I need to do study cards. Um, I'm going to use Quizlet and uh, maybe there's something on Cod Academy or maybe there's additional stuff on D2L. OK, so create your plan and then follow your plan. And again, today is what the Thursday before finals. Most likely you've already started studying. So your plan has already begun. The one thing you want to do is maintain the plan. Don't quit the plan. The plan is your guide to get you to where you need to be. OK, um, and realize people don't study in marathon sessions. They say they do, but they're not telling you the truth. The average person attention span is roughly eight to 10 minutes. And actually that's old. It's probably more like 10 to 30 seconds. Um, realistically though, when you're reading and trying to digest information and learn it, about 10, 15 minute chunks is what's gonna happen, okay? That's the realistic, I think, for you to intake information without losing concentration and still being able to understand the material. Now, breaks are important. And many people say, oh, no, 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 you can't take a break. Absolutely take breaks, but your break can't be longer than your study session, okay? So let's say you study for 15 minutes, get up, maybe go to the bathroom, get a drink of water, then come back to it. Another thing to think about is alternating topics at this point. When you take breaks, many times that's a good time to go on to another subject, just to break up sort of the monotony of the situation. Um, and again, a lot of these things that you, you are going to test out and kind of figure out what your groove is because everybody has a different one, okay? I'm the 15, 20 minute type person. You know, some other people, maybe they can stay for 35 minutes straight and then they need a break. But the most important thing to do is realize when you're drifting off and floating off, break time, okay? Breaks should only be about two to three minutes, okay? These are not big, 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 big breaks. breaks. We want small, tiny incremental breaks in between so we don't decide to just kind of go off and do something else, okay? Um, I think I hit everything there. Any questions? Okay. We have a few questions. Uh, oh, we do, okay, practice. go ahead. A question from a student, uh, let me see. I cannot stop going to the bathroom during finals. What do I do to stop this? Um, well, there's could be a couple of things going on here. 
Um, if you're like a super connoisseur of water, <laughs> um, it will get to you and you will be going to the bathroom every 15 minutes, literally. So you may wanna cut back just a little bit before that final exam, um, maybe an hour before kind of stop drinking so much water or caffeine. Caffeine is also, um, oh, what's the word? I can't think of the word. Anyway, it's something that helps you actually want to go to the bathroom. So we kind of need to watch the balance of all that water and the caffeine balance. Students, many times this time of the year feel like they need the extra caffeine to stay awake and study. Be very, 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 very careful of that. Um, and when you start mixing energy drinks and caffeine and no dose, students end up in the hospital with heart palpitations because you've put too much in there. It's almost like you're having a reaction like speed almost. OK, so be careful of that. Hopefully that will help um, with the whole water situation. Um, I cannot sleep the day before finals. Sure. Don't take sleeping pills. No. What you probably want to try to do um, is knowing that you have a hard time sleeping. And I, I have this happen sometimes too, especially if one that's something very big. Um, you definitely want to plan your day out and plan some type of exercise. I know I said it. I can't believe I did. But um, a little bit goes a long way and it helps you sleep. Okay. Stay away from the pills, stay away from alcohol or anything like that. That's going to mess with your brain because it needs to that time to rest and digest the information that you're learning. Okay. Um, try to maybe um, at night, I know this is going to sound crazy, you know, the old warm milk trick, maybe taking a warm bath before you go to bed things that would naturally kind of calm you down in the evening so that you start to feel that, you know, a relief of stress and, and it can kind of just go off to sleep. But yeah, I highly recommend not taking those types of pills um, of any kind, just because it can really mess with your brain. And we need that thing to be top notch when it comes to the final exams. Okay. So try some of those techniques. If you can exercise, is huge. Uh, obviously, you don't want to do too much to strain yourself, but exercise is really, really important in helping you get uh, a good amount of sleep. So try those things and let me know how it works out. Okay, I think we have everybody. Supposed to, um, okay, a comment from a student. I make sure that I take walks in between study times. Oh, I think that's fantastic. That's a great idea. Um, and, you know, the, it's a lot of um, people. Um, assume that when you study, you have to sit at a desk in a chair. That doesn't necessarily have to happen. When you're taking your walks, maybe you have your note cards with you, your, you know, flashcards, and you can read them while you walk. Okay. Doing something a lot of times while you're studying really does help, especially if, especially if you are somebody who's kinesthetic or very hands-on. You don't like sitting at a desk. That's not kind of your thing then get up and study. You don't have to sit at a desk and chair. You can stand up. You can take a walk. Okay. There's many, many different things you can do. Some people will sit on a stationary bike, prop that up in front of them. Okay. So kind of think, think about, think about things like that. Okay. I think that's all the questions I think. Okay. All right. So let's get to the next slide here is note making. And yes, that's not, an, that's not a mistake. It's not note taking because we're beyond taking notes at this point. We're taking the notes and making them into some type of studyable material, okay? Reading over notes is not active and does not help you study. It's very passive. So we want to try to convert into something active, whether you're uh, maybe drawing pictures and diagrams and charts and things like that and labeling them, that's an active process. Um, using your note cards and touching them and talking and speaking out loud, those kinds of things can help you learn. Um, notice this person here is, is sort of a color, a little bit of a color coordinator. You've got the different colored post-it notes, highlighters, things like that. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. Maybe that's not your style. OK, but we want to have something to do when we study. And that doesn't mean just eat or something like that. It means doing something while you're learning. OK, you're writing, you're, you're taking notes, you're highlighting. Maybe you're talking out loud so you can hear yourself while you study. Just kind of an aside, the more senses that you use when you're inputting information, the more likely you are to remember. The only one I can't figure out is taste. 
Okay, if I could, I, I would probably be multimillionaire. But you see it, you hear it, you say it. Believe it or not, sometimes there might be a smell. Like I always think of like the memories growing up when we went to the beach. You know, the beach has a certain sight, certain sound, certain taste. Yes, I've had salt water in my mouth and sand, so it does have a certain taste. Beach has a certain smell as well, okay? And it certainly has a, a you know, a very distinct feel, sand. So I've hit all five senses, and that's why those memories to me are very vivid because it appeals to every single sense, okay? Um, uh, I don't know. Now, this is going to be based on your professor. Some of you have the ability to keep your old quizzes and tests, and I know some of you don't. If you are allowed to keep them, use them to your advantage, okay? You've been tested on it once. They, you know how the professor wrote the type of question. You know how he or she is testing. Use the material to your advantage and re-study it relearn, or actually it's probably not relearn, it's just kind of refresh, okay? Use the stuff that's there. Don't recreate the wheel if it's already invented. Um, try to do different questions of difficulty. I think it's really important when you take a final exam to know where your points, points are. Uh, for instance, let's say you have a, a final exam and part of it's multiple choice and part of it is um, an essay and you have two hours. Well, you didn't really kind of look at how to budget your time carefully, and you found out that that essay was worth 75% of the grade and the multiple choices were 25%, and you spent over half of your time on the multiple choice. Now we have an issue. Okay, so kind of budget your time. Where are the points? Where, where do I need to spend the majority of my time to get the maximization of points? Okay. Also, going back to studying old tests, many times they'll repeat those questions. And they'll just test you to see if you actually took it again, okay? So definitely whatever you get back that's been graded, take a look at it and understand why you got what you did right and why you got wrong what you did, okay? Both are equally important for learning. Okay, so let's talk about the learning pyramid. And, and you know, I could get really detailed on this and, and I'm not, I'm gonna keep it about as simple as possible. We retain more information when we learn something by either practicing a relevant activity or teaching somebody, okay? You can call it the learning pyramid. I've heard it called different things, but if you look at the top, lecture, we only retain 5%. That's a pretty small percentage, but reading you retain 10%. I still, that's just so teeny tiny, teeny. Audiovisual, we retain 20%. That's better, but I don't know about you. If I'm gonna spend my time studying, that's not, that's not helpful. So 30% by demonstrating something. So if I demonstrate a, a topic or something to somebody, I'm lucky to remember 30% of that. Getting better, but not great. Discussion groups, 50%. So if you have a study group that you normally study with, you're lucky to remember 50%, and that, that's a good percentage, but still not high enough. It's good to do, but there's more we can do. Practice by doing 75%. Okay, so let's say you know that you are going to have different multiple, a multiple choice test. Why don't you and your study group, everybody makes up a practice test, everybody takes everybody else's test. See how you do. You're practicing by doing it. Okay, number one, 90%. You will remember 90% if you can teach it to somebody else. Why? That means you understand it in your own words and the, you're the way that you think, not the way somebody else thinks by just memorizing, okay? So we really wanna focus on, on those last two areas when we study. Practice by doing and by teaching others. Um, and you know, maybe, you, maybe you're living at home, maybe you're not on campus and you have your family. Well, grab, grab your, somebody that you live with and say, okay, just sit down for a minute. I'm gonna teach you a few things today and see how it goes, okay? If you do it well and they understand, you know the material, okay? Anybody have a question about this one? We have quite a number of questions on the chat. Oh, I see coming in now. Okay, yes, I do. Let me back up a little bit. Okay. Uh, Okay, 
Question from a student. How can I convince my professor to give extra time during finals? I wish they would understand all of this are not the same and will take some time to answer questions. <sighs> this is a tough one um, because this is completely up to the professor. The only way you are permitted by university policy, let me say it this way, by university policy, the only way that you get extended time is if you have a learning disability that is documented through the learning support office on campus, okay? However, some professors are willing to work with you if they just know it takes you just, maybe you need an extra 10 or 15 minutes, ask. Don't do it in the middle of the class. Don't do it in front of everybody. Do it before the final exam. The worst answer you're gonna get is no. Okay, most likely they might give you a little bit more time, but I, I'm going to tell you it's not going to be a, 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 tremendous, a tremendous amount. It's not going to be like an extra hour, but I do feel your pain. So that's why it's important to practice these two hour sessions so that you can see how it feels. Like when I took the SAT or GRE, those are time tests. So I practiced them timed. Literally, I had my, you know, my, well, I didn't have a phone at that time, but, you know, I put down a timer and time myself for the allotted time to see if I could do it in that time. That's a good practice for you. Okay. Starting assignments give me a lot of anxiety. I think starting anything is the hardest part. That's why. I, I truly believe that. Um, I think it was uh, Woody Allen that said 80% of success is just showing up. I think the same is true of just getting started. Um, and you know, maybe it's not that assignment. Maybe you just need to open up something else or look at some different part, start in a different place. Okay, um, but you would be surprised once you get past starting point, then things kind of get rolling. All right, don't get frustrated with it. Maybe you get frustrated with that part. You need to go to a different part of the chapter or a previous chapter just so you can tie up some loose ends and maybe make it a little bit more clear for yourself. Okay, um, and yes, anxiety is part of studying. I totally get that. But let's see if when you first sit down for that, you know, uh, chapter, open it up. Get ready for that assignment and start some breathing exercises. Maybe even just shut your eyes for a few seconds. Just kind of take a beat, okay? Breathe, relax. Breathe, relax, okay? See if that helps, okay? What do we do if we prepare and still find we don't understand the material adequately for the exam when it comes? Uh-oh, okay, multiple things. I think this comes on a different slide and that's okay, I don't care. Um, study group, study group, study group. If you're studying with a group and you don't understand what's going on, they should have your answer, okay? Teachers, if you don't understand the material, you need to ask. Tutoring, if you don't understand the material, go to tutoring. You've paid for it already, whether you use it or not, use it, okay? You don't wanna walk into the final exam saying, well, I don't understand half of this. Ask questions now. Okay, this is a normal part of the process. If you don't understand, ask until you get it. And you know, this will help another student just as well. If they can, if he or she can teach it to you, then they're learning at the same time. Okay, ask questions. Don't go into an exam where you don't know what's going on. Okay, today's Thursday. You have plenty of time. If your first final's on Tuesday, you still have plenty of time to get any answers um, that you need to questions you don't understand. Okay. Uh, okay, a lot, oh yes, okay. I experience a lot of anxiety and related dizziness. Yeah, dizziness is certainly another physical manifestation of uh, stress. Now, it kind of depends on how dizzy you are. It may be something that you definitely want to talk to your doctor about um, because I'm not that kind of doctor. <laughs> um, many times uh, you may be actually experiencing vertigo, which may or may not be related to the stress and anxiety. Um, but what I think you're going to have to do is isolate what, when and how is that happening, okay? Is, it, is there a trigger? And if you can figure out the trigger, then you have a better chance of trying to, to figure out why it's happening. I think it's something certainly you definitely want to talk to your doctor about too, because it could be a physical issue that's affecting you mentally. Um, but once you clear those kinds of things up, then you and your doctor um, can kind of figure out what's triggering the situation and how do we solve it? Is it through breathing? Is it through taking a quick walk? Is it, you know, um, uh, doing different, uh, different 
excuse me, different techniques or, or if you meditate, meditating is certainly something a lot of students do, a lot of people do to control, control their stress levels. Okay, anxiety can, yes, it can. You can hyperventilate with um, uh, stress and that's why it's so critical to take the moment to slow down your heart. Um, when your heart beats out of control, the oxygen that you're bringing in is not adequate. That's why you want to try to deep breathe and feel it through your diaphragm, not your stomach. No, I'm sorry, vice versa. Feel it through your stomach, not your diaphragm. Okay. When you breathe up further up, well, you can't see me. <laughs> when you breathe up on top of your, your rib cage, you can't get near the amount of oxygen you can as if you stretch out and breathe through your belly. Okay. So that's something you want to do. And again, count, inhale one, two. Eights are difficult, start with fours. One, two, three, four, and the next exhale. One, two, three, four. And you don't have to count it out loud. Just do it in your brain and just do that a few times. And you're gonna notice your heart rate's gonna start to go down naturally. And when that goes down, everything else starts to calm down in your body, okay? So that's really important. Also, if you already experience anxiety, you might wanna watch your caffeine intake. Um, caffeine has been known to make people jittery before. Um, so if you know you already have issues with that, try your very best to stay away from it. Okay. These are great questions. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. So let's talk about a few more strategies and please keep the questions coming. This is great. Eliminate distractions. And this sounds so easy and it's not as easy as you might think, because we all have this thing, right? You know, I, in fact, I bet where you are right now, all of you have it either in hands reach or you might even have it in your hand at this moment, okay? That is probably the biggest thing you have to learn to control is your phone. Don't let it control you, you control it. Now, for some students, that means not only turning it off, but moving it so it's not within your arm's reach, okay? And I know you think you're gonna miss something, it'll be okay. Put on your phone, hey, I'm studying right now. I'll get back to you. Okay, you can put the do not disturb on your phone. You probably know 30 things that you can do with your phone that I can't or that I don't know is more like it. Um, but use it to your advantage. Okay, there are also, you know, okay, I don't want to do this reading. I don't want to do this reading. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to set my phone for 15 minutes and I'm going to focus, 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 focus on that reading for 15 minutes. When it goes off, then you can take that quick break. And maybe that's something that helps energize you. OK, but we don't want to be surfing and doing all that stuff at the same time. You know, it doesn't work. OK, there is this big misnomer that we can multitask. <laughs> we don't. We'll talk about that later. OK, um, watch your television. I don't think that's nearly as a distraction, but uh, my sister was one growing up. You know, she'd had the TV on, the radio on, and I couldn't think because there was too much going on. I'm the kind of person that needs a quiet when I study. OK, so for, for me, that was a distraction. Now, some people like to study with music on, and I think that's fine. One, be leery of lyrics because those lyrics will get stuck in your head, not the material. OK, um, but, you know, that's perfectly fine. In fact, they'll say classical music actually helps increase your memory. OK. All right. Eat healthy. We want to try to put good stuff in our bodies. Okay, stay hydrated again. If you're too hydrated, you don't have to. But I think um, what I've seen in most classrooms, I think most professors are fairly lenient about bringing water unless it's maybe a lab situation. Um, so as long as you can, bring it with you because that will keep you hydrated throughout the test. Two hours is a long time. Make sure you eat. Now, if you are not a breakfast person, never, ever eat breakfast. Don't eat breakfast. If you're normally not a breakfast person, don't change something that you're, that you're normally not doing the day of the test. Now, you may want to bring something with you because the worst thing that happened is you're in there on that test and your belly's, you know, it's growling because you're starving. So make sure you bring something with you, okay? Try to bring something like an apple, a banana, you know, something maybe not like a sugary Snickers or something like that, okay? Um, if you drink herbal tea, great. If you don't, you don't have to start, but... Um, tea is definitely one of those things that can actually be calming and relaxing, but I don't want you to relax because I don't want you to sleep when you go into your final. Okay, I see some more questions have come through here. Question. Ooh, okay. All right. 
question from a student. I psychologically start to withdraw from my friends towards finals, which makes my friends misunderstand me. How do I make them understand when I am not sure, while they're not sure while you're withdrawing? You just got to talk to them. It's all about communication. You know, you sit down with your friends and say, hey, during final exams, I'm not going to be my normal self. I like to isolate myself to study. Please don't take it personally. You're still my greatest friend in the whole world, and I love you. But during finals, I tend to do things differently, okay? Just talk to them about it. Normally, they're going to understand. Now, as long as your psychological withdrawal is okay, if it's negative, then we need to go a different route. But a lot of people do like to kind of separate themselves, not socialize as much. That's what I'm assuming this question means. If it means that you're isolating yourself because you're freaking out, then you need to talk to somebody. Okay, go to your advisor, go to your teacher, go to your best friend, whomever it is. And, you know, I need some help. We got counseling services on this campus specifically for this kind of situation. Okay. Okay. It is important to go on your own pace. That is so true. Yes, this is very distracting too. When students start leaving, they get up and other people are watching them leave. Oh my gosh, I should be done. They're done. I can't believe why, why. Do it the way that you do it. Don't worry about anybody else, okay? Even if you're the last, room to, last one to leave room, who cares? You are granted two hours. So again, I think this is, I'm, I'm glad who, uh, is this Pustine? This is great. Please, please remember this. Don't worry about somebody else. Worry about yourself, okay? Do what you need to do for you and pace it for you. Great, great statement. Thank you for putting that up there. Okay, all right. It looks like I got those. Okay, um, we already talked about food. Let's talk about fun. Treat yourself. Let's have a little bit of fun. Uh, after your final exam that you've been studying for for hours and hours and hours, give yourself a little treat. Now, I'm not telling you to go all out, go crazy with it, but maybe, maybe you take yourself out to dinner. Maybe it's time to go see a movie. Maybe it's um, going back to your friends and having a little social event. Okay, um, it, a reward system is always nice. Um, when you do work hard, you deserve praise. And many times you won't get it from anybody else but yourself. And that is important. So pat yourself on the back, give yourself kudos for when you did well with something, okay? Um, if you still have more finals to take, then make the rewards small, enjoyable, and then get your focus back on for the rest of your exams, okay? Looks like I got one more. And this was, okay. This was exactly what I was talking about before. Ask for help. Meet with a tutor. Don't get it, ask again. Don't get it, go again. Do it as many times as you need to until you get the answer, okay? Summarize what you know. Summarizing means you put the information into your own words. If you're memorizing somebody else's definition, it's useless. It needs to come from you in your own words. That means you understand it, okay? Ask the professor if you still have questions. Doesn't mean you can't talk to anybody during finals. You can still get in touch with them. They're still here, okay? And again, go back to your study group. Hey guys, I'm missing something here. I don't know what's going on. I, I, I don't know, I'm missing my notes. Something happened. Can you help? Most likely they're gonna help you, okay? Get together. If you study in your groups, hopefully you already have, you hopefully have been doing my bi-weekly or weekly meetings, test each other, make a practice test, um, do all those kinds of things to test each other and prepare each other well, and then you succeed as a group. And that feels really good. I like this one, prepare, prepare, prepare. Myth, you can over-prepare for finals. No, you can't. Okay. People will think they've overprepared, which means they really haven't prepared and so they're not adequately ready. You need to space out different times during the week. Don't do it all the night before. Stay up till 3 a.m. You're not going to get to sleep. You're not going to get the rest. You're going to be hungry and tired and things aren't going to go well for you. Okay. So please, you cannot overprepare. Okay. Keep studying. Okay, I think you guys got me with a lot of the questions early on. Do you have any more? Oh, I see some, okay. Oh boy, this is a long one. 
Joe, oh my goodness. I was one of those students who decided that I was going to be the last student out of the test. Helped me ignore those who'd finished early. They were praying right into my plan to be the last one out. Also, as part of my plan is to go through the test three times. Wow. First time was gonna be confident answering 50% of the test. Second time was to answer 50% of the remaining questions. Third was to focus on those that were most challenging. It not only helped me manage my time to success with questions that put me back in place when I learned and it made all the difference. Uh, Joe, I think that's very, very good um, information. And I think also I would bet that the second and third time you went through the tests and answered the questions that you may have learned other material on the test that help you answer the ones that you didn't know. And that's actually a smart test taking strategy. Use the test to your advantage. If you don't know the answer, it's okay to skip it and come back to it. And many times you'll find that answer somewhere else in the test. So very well said. It's hard when everyone's going to party and you're all by yourself studying. Yep, it is. But guess what? You're gonna get done eventually and you'll be able to go, go meet them, okay? You gotta balance. Right now, finals time. Party later. It will, you'll get there, you'll get there. Just give yourself some time to get done what you need to so you can be successful. Come back next semester, see all your friends and have a great time. Okay, other questions? If I look funny, I just keep looking be underneath my uh, uh, camera. That's where my tab is. Oh, there's one question, Christine. Oh, yes. In this era of smartphones, how do you not look for answers online and basically cheat? <laughs> You know what, that's a really interesting question. I'm glad you actually put it. Um, if you're taking an online test, many teachers have already prepared for that. So they know that you can look up the answer, but what they do is they give you an application-based question instead of like a regurgitation question. So instead of asking you, let's say, what, um, what are Maslow's five hierarchy of needs? Instead of asking that question, they might say, look at this situation and they give you a scenario which need does this student have based on Maslow's hierarchy of needs? That's an application question. That is not a rote memorization question. Those are tougher to find online. So be aware you may get caught into your own situation, okay? Uh, yeah, your phone, oh, yeah, the phone is the worst enemy during finals. Turn it off and put it away. Put it in a drawer, give it to your best friend. Okay, you don't have to have your phone in your hand all the time. You can leave it. It'll be okay. As I, as I say, being as old as I am now, it was nice when I went to college and I didn't have to return a message right away. Okay, you can disassociate yourself. Maybe you need to start practicing when you're in your room. Okay, you know what? I'm going to practice for 10 minutes. I'm going to put my phone over there in a drawer. I'm going to turn the sound off and I'm just going to do something else for 10 minutes and not have that phone anywhere near me. The next time you try for 15 the next time you try for 20, you'll get there. Okay, it's not gonna be easy. If it was, everybody would be doing it, right? But practice, you'll get there. Okay, other questions? Margaret, I assume they probably need to go to class at one o'clock, so. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Christine. That was absolutely, absolutely useful information. Especially so. during this time, of course, we know that a lot of students are, you know, stressed out. Finals mm -hmm. are coming next week, yep. and many are not prepared. And that will really, really help the students that attended. I want to thank you so much, all of you, for logging in and for being here. We really do appreciate your presence. Mm -hmm. These sessions are really very important to you. I see people that have been here and we are very grateful and they are all meant for you. We wish you a uh, success in your finals and we also wish you uh, uh, a merry, happy holiday until <laughs> next semester. Absolutely. Again, thank you so much, Christine. And I thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Attended, both faculty and staff and people from out there. Thank you, Joe and Postine for your input. Yes, really, thank really you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good one.